Greetings and salutations out there, everybody across the wide and wonderful internet. Michael Shibley with you here on another beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon here in Knoxville, Tennessee. You're glad this is the first time we're trying this on a live stream talking about the Vols and their win over Tennessee Tech. Got some new artwork going to be hanging up in the stream studio, so look forward to that. We're actually going to make a ooh, hello there. Hello, all my beautiful people. Going to get up close and personal with y'all. Helps if I turn on the proper lighting. So that looks a little bit better. You can see my face a tad better. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. But we've got this uploaded and going. But again, Tennessee Tech getting the win 56 to nothing over the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. Tennessee, of course, just doing what they need to do. They got the win. They didn't really have anybody injured too much that I garnered from anything I saw. I was actually live in the stadium. It was really nice. I was able to get my parents in town one more time before they move down to Texas, uh, where, of course, they're going to be around a lot more of that really ugly burnt oil. It's just ugh, that orange. It's just nasty. Hate it. Ugh, it's gross. Ugh, I don't really want it in the SEC, but we'll take it, I guess. But... We are moving on with that. Again, I, I don't know how much we're really going to learn from this game. There were some good things. Again, Tennessee got the win, which is good. I don't know how many wins we're really going to get to celebrate this year with my beloved Tennessee Vols. So that's always something you need to think about, especially, again, as we say, we're three games into this season. But remember, Tennessee only went 3-7 and seven last year. They lost a lot of players, not only to the NFL draft, but many more to the transfer portal, especially good players we could really use on this team. So everybody keep that in mind. Again, we're going through a new staff, all those different things. People just need to realize that. I wish they would pay more attention to things like that when they look going forward. Tennessee took care of business. They, they pitched a shutout. That's hats off. To the defense, I think they also got four turnovers that they turned into four different touchdowns, including one pick six. Could have had a second pick six if Alante Taylor didn't step out of bounds. So you look at all that, really, you, they could have played better. In this team, you look at some of the other teams Tennessee has had in the last few years, they could have beaten this Tennessee Tech team 77 to nothing when you look at everything. They still made some mistakes. We're still, no matter which quarterback, that's one of the big things I think everybody needs to pay attention to. No matter which quarterback Tennessee has under center, they've all overthrown people now. Harrison Bailey, who everybody, so many people have been clamoring for him to get the start. He's shown me nothing more special than Milton or Hooker at this point, to be perfectly honest. They're all overthrowing balls. They're missing targets. They're taking too much time back there, even though they've had plenty of time against, again, inferior opponents. Tennessee's playing Florida in the swamp next Saturday. Trust me, with the way our offensive line is going to be playing, that's we're probably not going to have that much time to make decisions and throw those deep balls, at least for the time being. We'll see how it all goes. That's just what I'm thinking, at least at the moment. I thought we could have run the ball better. I think most of the good runs we had were from our quarterbacks, really. So nothing spectacular there. Tennessee did what they did. They got the win, which, again, I'm not going to complain about that, especially if you look at what Florida State did last week against their FCS opponent. So it could be a lot worse. But, again, we are going to get some lessons learned guys were able to get again you got a lot of guys that got some game time we emptied out the bench which again that's why I'm happy with the shutout you had a lot of guys in there that might not get a lot of playing time and they were still able to preserve the shutout our special teams have still just been dynamite Velas Jones Jr I love the way he runs those kicks back I mean he juked I think on one of those punt returns he juked two guys out of their drawers, which was a lot of fun to see. And again, you've got to take in consideration that Tennessee Tech this season is not very good at football. It's, they're just not. You can argue, and I know a lot of people who root for Tennessee probably went to Tennessee Tech. They're just not that good this season. So you've got a Tennessee team that took care of business. And that's what you need to do. Get the win. Hopefully, again, Josh Heupel is going to take all of this and make some more decisions 
going down the line. I thought Tennessee did good pressure on the quarterback. I think all three of them were were in the game for Tennessee Tech. None of them were spectacular. But then once we knocked out their first string quarterback, it was even farther downhill than what it was. Tennessee went for it on a lot of fourth downs. They were, I think they were better on fourth down than they really were on third down for much of the game. So those are things we need to look at and consider as we go forward. Again, our wide receiver, I think Cedric Tillman could probably have about five touchdowns if the quarterbacks could dial in any of those deep balls. And honestly, again, you look now, the SEC schedule starts. We've got Florida this week in the Swamp, and then we've got Missouri, who, again, is a solid SEC team. Tennessee, the line just came out. Tennessee is a 22-point underdog against a Florida team that fought Alabama honestly better than I thought they were. I thought Alabama was good. I didn't bet it because, again, weird things can happen in some of these SEC games like this but I thought Alabama was going to win by a larger margin than they did. But you give credit to Florida for being scrappy and hanging in there with the number one team in the country. But they're going to be out for Tennessee. I don't think they're, of course, in all these years, I mean, since 2004, Tennessee's won, what, once? I think in 2016 against Florida. Is that 15 out of 16 games? Something like that. It's not good. So Florida does not worry about Tennessee. They have no fear of the orange and white at all. And based on the last uh, pretty much decade and a half, they shouldn't have anything to worry about, to be perfectly honest. And again, I love my balls. I'm going to root for them all the time. But I'm just being frank with everybody that Florida's going to come into this game expecting to roll through Tennessee. And Tennessee's going to have to figure things out. The offensive line is going to have to play better. We're going to have to get some running room. And when you look at the quarterback play, Honestly, if all three quarterbacks are healthy and good to go, me personally, and you can let me know in the chat if I'm full of it, but I still would rather go with Milton. I think, again, all these guys have overthrown the deep ball. So none of them have been perfect when it comes to that. But I think Milton, I think his trajectory, he has so much more of an upward trend. Hooker is a really solid, really good quarterback. I like how he plays as well. And I think right now you have him pretty much at his ceiling of where he's going to go. I think Milton, with the physical abilities that Milton has, is just like a big lump of clay that I think if they take some time and mold it, he could be something really special. Now, are they going to give him the time to do that? We'll see. And again, Josh Heupel is going to be very mum on the injury notes and how long they're going to be out. That's just the way... It's going to be. We're going to have to get used to that. That's just the way he runs his program, and that is perfectly fine. If they start Hooker, I would start Hooker, especially if Milton's not able to go. Again, Bailey, he's been the third-string quarterback under the last two coaching staffs. Again, I don't have anything against the guy. It's just the coaches are there watching them day in and day out at practice. Of course. Do they make mistakes? Of course they do. But this is what I see. And again, when he came in, and I was live in person in Neyland Stadium watching the game, I didn't see anything that's going to change my mind that he should be the starting quarterback at this point. Maybe things will get better in practice. I don't know. But I don't know how much we can really take for this. It was almost like a preseason game, really, for Tennessee with getting this win. It's one of those things when you look at it, I honestly wish that – in college football, you would get rid of one game. Here's what I would do if I was running things. If you're going to have a game like this Tennessee Tech game on your schedule every year, I would get rid of the conference championship games. I don't think you really need them anymore. You've got the college football playoff committee, have all those things. I'd have an eight-team playoff, by the way. I'd have eight teams going at it. You'd have five conference champions and three at larges. So if you have a tie between, say, Alabama and Georgia. They don't have to play in the SEC championship game. They're just both most likely going to be in the playoff. I would – so get rid of that game. I'd get rid of one of these non-conference regular season games. So you'd have 11 games and then have, like, this FCS game just be a preseason game to open the season so everybody can kind of get their legs and figure everything out. But that's, 
at least my opinions on everything. I am not, I'm always up for the Tennessee Florida game. I'm always going to be up for it. Always excited to watch it, but I'm not liking Tennessee's chances in it, at least here on a Sunday after Tennessee gets their win. But we can go through this together. I am going to start doing some live streaming of watching the Tennessee football games here from the streaming room in my house here in beautiful Knoxville, Tennessee. You can catch me over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash shibbles in bits. It's spelled the same here as the YouTube channel. You can check it out there if you want to join me. I'm going to be up probably about 15 or so minutes before the game, getting ready and getting all the stuff set up and letting the chat build. But if you guys want to come and watch and be miserable with me as we go through watching Tennessee play their annual rivalry against the Gators, I would love to have you guys there. And of course, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about it. And of course, leave a comment. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And if you have a different perspective, I'm happy to discuss it with you. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and tuning in. I will catch you guys next time. Too sweet. Love you. Go Vols. Adios.